Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Shadowrun Dragonfall. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as we read the third DVD. Uh, maybe there's nothing else, but uh, let's find out what track 4 has for us. While this track does load, it's corrupted and it has bad text. And the track 5, a rattling sound fills the air as the disc grinds in its tray. Uh, grinds? Hmm. A few seconds later, the screen fills with text. Dr. Vauclair, 2034, 10th of September. It is my sad duty to inform you that by unanimous vote of the off sheet uh, mm? of Z, Z, I think, of Z Krat, potentially, your uh, position of CEO or as CEO of Dale Defense uh, will be terminated at the end of this calendar month. Yeah, we were uh, reading about stuff like this or the fallout anyway of this particular thing, I think, uh, last episode. Your continued misallocation of company funds to pursue personal agendas cannot and will not be tolerated any longer. The supervisory board is not unsympathetic to your mental state. The trauma that you endured during your pursuit of the Dragonfire Svinga must... Uh, I really need to read on to, uh, to look into how to pronounce that. Uh, must have been enormous. But your continuing obsession with the dragon, the dead dragon I'm, I might, might add, has proven a negative influence on this company and an unjustified drain on company resources. The board wishes you all the best in your future endeavors. We have prepared a generous severance package to assist you in this time of transition. If there is anything more that we can do to help you, please don't hesitate to ask. Werner Harding, which is the new CEO, I believe, and we can eject that DVD. And uh, that is that. Hmm. Paul. Hamzel calls over his shoulder at the sound of your approach. His eyes are glued to his computer's display. Edie, Frau Müller should be on her way, but before you go to the meeting site, I have news. He glances at you and his words trail off. Upon seeing the expression on your face, Hamzel's voice becomes grave. It can wait. Tell me what has happened. Uh, oh yeah, the ambush. I forgot about that. Um... Bad news, my friend. Somebody is hunting us. They set up an ambush on the U-Ban line. Amsel pauses and then gives a curt nod. Truth be told, I've been expecting that something like that might happen. I'm just glad that you made it out alive. Uh, one of the attackers dropped this. I have a, an encrypted PDA. Amsel takes the PDA from you and examines it. Yes, yes. It should be... I should be able to extract some information from this. Give me a moment. He plugs the PDA into his computer and... Um, Shouldn't be that one word. And goes to work. A few moments later, he lets out a grunt of dismay. Well, Itty, I was able to recover a file. But unfortunately, that's all I'll ever be able to pull off this thing. All that anyone will, truth be told. It must have been running some kind of counter-intrusion software. The instant that I gained access, it wrecked itself. Amsel disconnects the useless PDA and drops it to the ground. It clatters to a rest on the metal floor. Uh, what did you manage to pull off of it? A com file. The audio is here, but it looks like we have only got video from one side of the conversation. Let's see what we have. He opens the file, and a nightmarishly familiar face appears on the screen. Let me guess. It's Green Winters. No, it's not. It's this jerk. This this guy that we found at the beginning of the game that we would have killed if the game wasn't scripted for him not to have killed, but this is a main character. Beckmeyer. The voice bleats out from... Amsel's display filling the room. Aldrin here. What's your status? Beckmeyer's image is garbled, but his voice sounds young and eager. Target acquired, sir. You were right. We spotted him on the U-Ban, just like you said. Probably on his way to a job. As per your instructions, we're gonna try to take him out on his way back. He'll be more vulnerable that way. Hopefully injured and low on ammo, too. But only time will tell. Good man. Proceed as instructed. Will do. Cosman is rigging up a, an ambush spot now. We'll try to make it quick. The orc with the nightmare face nods. Send me a calm when the job is done. Audrin out. The image on the computer screen dies. Amsel turns to face you. Well, now scarred friend makes an appearance. Itty, I suspect that Green Winters' predictions are coming true. I believe the fire finger is behind this. Under Amsel's... Uh, uh, under... Amsel's patient exterior, you can feel the worry that's eating at him. Be on your guard, you and the rest of your team. You make it through this attack relatively unscathed, but next time, you might not be so lucky. 
Uh, at least now we have a name to put the face uh, to put to the face, Audrin. Now that's not all we have. As I was saying when you first walked in, I've been productive as well. I was able to uncover some new evidence in your absence, and coincidentally enough, that evidence pertains to our scarred friend. You might recall that I said I'd dig into Audrin's skin grafts. Well, I did, and that search has finally borne fruit. One of my contacts outside of Berlin had, uh, handles the paperwork for private hospitals all ac across Germany. It's a dull, boring job, but it does have its perks. Emsel pulls open a file on his, computers, uh, on his computer. A medical chart opens up on the screen. As it turns out, our scarred friend skin, uh, friend's skin grafts were performed at a legitimate hospital, after all. Uh, so, some good news for once. What do they say? Well, they are rather light on identifying information. Our friend's name is listed as Max Musterman, uh, the uh, local equivalent of John Doe. But they do cover his injuries in great detail. Audrin's injuries were extensive. He had two broken ribs and a uh, shattered pelvis, and he had sustained third-degree burns over 60% of his body. Most... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, most damningly of all, he was suffering from acute radiation poisoning. As I'm suffering from acute frog in my throat. That um, Anyway, it's fixed now. Um, his body had absorbed over 5,000 millisieverts of ionizing radiation. A lethal dose without treatment. Yeah, I think 8,000 is, is enough to never be curable. Even with treatment, so that is incredible. The information dries up at this point. We know that he was treated and discharged, but what happened afterwards remains a mystery. You pause for a moment, studying your reaction. Your thoughts? Hold nothing back. I'd like to. I'd like to hear everything that comes to mind. Um. Well, those burns sound like dragon fire, but if uh, Firewing burned Aud Audrin. Why would he be working for her now? I don't think that Audrin is working for the Firewing. I believe he is serving her. On Green Winters' second DVD, he mentions that there is a cult within the SOX that works, uh, worships the Firewing. The Disciples of the Cleaning Fire. I believe that Audrin belongs to this cult. Hmm. Well, that's bad news. There's nothing more dangerous than a zealot. My thoughts exactly. A hireling can sometimes be bribed or reasoned with. A pawn can be liberated, but if the Firewing soldiers look upon her as a goddess figure, nothing short of killing her will deter them, and even that might not stop them. So, is, it is possible that Audrin is a dragon cultist. This seems to fit with much of the other information that we have uncovered. Did any red, other red flags jump out at you? Uh, yeah, well... The hospital couldn't ID Audrin. Either somebody covered his tracks for him, or he was living completely off the grid. Indeed, if Audrin were denizen of the SOX, a glowpunk, his lack of identifying information would make sense. Amzel adjusts his glasses. It's a working theory, at any rate. So, one way or another, Audrin is off the books. Either due to living off the grid, or a cover-up after the fact. Do you have another takeaway from to share? Uh, Audrin might have spent some time in the SOX, that radiation poisoning didn't happen on its own. Agreed. 5,000 millisieverts is a lot of exposure. Short of basking in the glow of an unshielded radi uh, reactor, I don't know how he'd have absorbed that much ionizing radiation without spending time in the SOX. So, to sum up, Audrin has probably spent time in the SOX. It's possible that he even lived there as a member of the Firestringer's dragon cult. And he is after you. Hamzel pauses for a moment before continuing. In my mind, all of this reinforces the fact that we need to find Vauclair. And we need to do it fast. Wait. Yeah, we need to find Vauclair, maybe, but... How does that follow? That's a good question, actually. Uh, we should need to find them both, but sh still... The Firewing's men made an attempt on your life, Edie. It is clear that the message we just saw that Audrin sent them out looking for you... For you. Wait, 
it is clear from the message we just saw that Audrun sent them out looking for you. Given enough time, he'll do it again. The next time, they might be more successful. We might, or we must act before that happens. But before we venture back to ha to the Half Hal Halfeld Manor, we need to find Vauclair. All the more reason to gather Alice's feet quickly, then. Agreed. There's a buzzing sound mm, uh, from Paul's wrist. He lifts his hand to look at, the, at his PDA. And, as luck would have it, Frau Muller has arrived. Best of luck at the meeting, Edie. Remember, this is urgent. We need that money. Yeah, don't worry. I'm on it. So, off to the... I... Mm, oh, there's level ups for everybody else. Uh, off to the uh, the coffee shop. Uh, so, let's see. I didn't expect this to be the, the level ups. I thought it was going to be my own level ups. But it's just Iger over here leveling up, I think. So, she... How many does she have? It looks like she can go up there, but I can't. So, it's this. So, either Sniper Specialist or Shotgun Ammo Mod. Iger gains a Sniper Rifle ability. Fires a discarding Sabot, or Sabo, HDI round that ignores armor completely. Like that. Oh, I can go up. Nice. And she gets a Sharpshooter over here. Iger gains a customized Ranger Arms uh, for SM-3. I don't know. I actually don't know what SM stands for. Uh, hmm. Is it like movement, maybe? Damage 20. It's, it's a lot. Huntress over here. I'm repiercing 2 as well. Yeah, I don't know what SM stands for. Uh, wired reflexes adds plus 1 movement to the passive. When triggered, user will dodge the first attack against them each round on the Huntress. Uh, costs 1 action point. Oh, that's interesting. But I, th I, I want to keep her at the back. That would be good if she were a shotgun user, because she needs to be close by. So, that's pretty good. Uh, but she's not the only one that needs to level up. Uh, we have Dietrich over here, that I'm... I keep mispronouncing. I think it's Dietrich. But I, I say Dietrich, because I'm bad. Uh, anyway, I don't know German. I'm sorry. I pro German is tricky. It's tricky as French, in terms of pronunciation. I know the rules... Oh, some of the rules, most of the rules, anyway, of French, and the pronunciation, so I can think through a word and, th and probably guess how it's pronounced. But for German, I have no idea. I have nowhere idea where to begin. I have I know the sound sometimes, but anyway, um, that is how it goes. So nerve spear over here. That is a uh, basic nerve bolt spell. Now pu flushes enemies from cover when they're hit. You mean that one doesn't do that? Yeah, I kind of want that. Um, Dietrich's uh, Dietrich Dietrich's years of devotion to the Dragon Slayer idol imbue him with an innate plus one armor. Nah, let's go with that. And then we have level five over here. The AOE. Radius of Dietrich's Electro Core, which is the other ability that he has, um, is increased by one in all directions, and Dietrich's Electro Core spell now costs one action point to cast, which is better. Uh, because, no, no, cancel, cancel, because there's more people leveling up. Um, so we got Glory over here with a Razor Specialist. I have not been doing that. She apparently is very good at being that, but. Yeah, we're going to go with Pistol Specialist over here. Gains a pistol attack that uh, targets up to four enemies and then opens fire on all of them. On a minus five accuracy, must have at least three targets for it to actually work. That is fantastic. That is amazing. And uh, Glory's ex Adrenal Pump lasts one additional round for a total of four rounds, which is pretty interesting. And Glory can use her Adrenal Pump on a downed ally to revive them. At 25% HP, shares a cooldown with her regular Adrenal Pump ability. Let's not go with that. Let's go with a extra thing because she's gonna be amazing with that particular uh, that particular ability. And we have Blitz, Blitz level five as well. Um, of course, he starts off a little bit later, but it's fine. So um, Blitz ESP control is increased by one. I'm not sure what that is. ESP boost. I think it has to do with the um, just controlling the robot. Blitz decking is increased by one. Oh, I'm going to go with decking, though. Because uh, I, I want that. We're going to need to go into the Matrix often, so... Yeah. Uh, and uh, Blitz gains a Farlight Excalibur Cyber Deck, replacing his old Virtua X deck. Or Blitz gains a Hydraulic Jack Cyberware, increasing his move speed by 4 as, uh, as a 0 action point action. Hmm. Duration 1 round. That's really interesting. But I think I, I want the deck upgrade. Uh, because that is... I can I can make do with l bad movement. But deck upgrades, I can't do without them. 
if I'm gonna need them for whatever is gonna happen. What are you giving me here? Optional return the data to the sh uh, shock file on the right of payphone. Wait a minute, I didn't do that? Wait a minute, that's not optional. What the heck? Return the data to the shock file on right of payphone. Why are you giving me the the objective here? I can't do anything there. Uh, that's weird. Let's go to the payphone. You know, you remember the payphone, right? The one on the upper right corner. Oh, actually, it's the upper corner of the screen. That's the upper right corner. If you think this is north, I'm not sure which north, uh, which part of north it is, uh, but it's up here. And I didn't go in there for some reason. Man, I do bad things. Anyway, um, it's here. It's there, rather, not here. Deliver the AG Chemi project data, drug formula, and visual records. The machine accepts the data, upload, and only a few moments later, a certified cred stick is spat out for a thousand. That's nice, New Yen. I, um, of the coin slot, the phone's LCD readout displays the text Freedom, Equality, Information, Shock Valenreiter. Walk away. And uh, we lost that formula, which is perfectly acceptable. We have a. Oh, it's objective over here for, for the. For the. What's the word? The subway, the U band, that's the one. Uh, but we need to go into into the uh, the coffee shop, the cafe. It's got a name. I don't I don't, don't remember the name, but it's there. It's written up there. Maybe I should talk to Alt Al, Al, Altug over here. I was gonna say Alt Altug, but it's an L. Uh, he smiles. Good. See you later. Never really talked to that guy again. Maybe it has to do with the with the um, the lodge thing as you press your way forward through the cozy smoke filled confines of cafe Chesve that's the uh, that's the name uh, you catch sight of Frau Muller she appears as Amsel described her an impressive looking woman of Astlaner descent with coffee colored skin and dark wavy hair I have no idea what Astlaner means Frau Muller sounds like a German name. In fact, I think it might be based on a real person. Because um, that name is not unfamiliar to me. Unless she's like a big person in, in, in Shadowrun. And that may be the reason why I remember her name. But I don't know what Astlaner means. Everything about her screams corporate executive. From her expensive looking suit to her tastefully understated makeup. She's obviously nervous, but she's hiding it well. She locks, her, uh, she locks eyes with you and hesitates only slightly before speaking. Hiri, I presume? Herr Hamsel told me that I could meet you here. Um, yeah, he, he wasn't lying. He said that you had a job for me. She holds her silence for a moment and then nods. Yes, yes, I do. In truth, I'm in desperate need of your help. Uh, th then tell me what you need, Frau Muller. Apparently I'm doing air quotes for Frau Muller. She offers you a small smile. An assumed name, obviously. But I have been told that this is how you people do business. She straightens in her seat and tries to smi uh, tries on a smile. It hangs there for a second, then it fades away. She sighs. From my accent, you have no doubt inferred that I am an Astlaner. Further, you may have guessed who I work for. I have no idea what the accent is, so she is British for me. Uh, <laughs> or, but anyway. I... I'm afraid I haven't. Care to fill me in? As technology, the only Astlan based corporation op operating in Germany. I've been with the company for over a decade. Over the course of my employment, I've worked on a great many projects. From the innocuous to the obscene, my hands have touched it all. Never once did I question the wisdom of our research. Never once did I consider blowing the whistle on my employers. I kept my nose down, worked hard, and excelled at the tasks set before me. Um, they must love you there. No more than any other employee. But my commitment and work ethic were recognized, and I ascended the corporate ladder fairly quickly, which brings me to where I am today. Last month, I was transferred here from my home in Tenochtitlan. 
They told me that an employee of my caliber was needed in Berlin and that I would be working on a project with wide-reaching applications. The only other detail that I was given was the name of the project, Bloodline. That doesn't sound good. She looks you in the eye, and for the first time, you can see the cracks in her composure. She's doing a good job of hiding it, but deep down, this woman is terrified. I've seen many terrible things in my life, Edie. In Technoctilian, or the other way around, uh, blood magic is commonplace. Take a moment to imagine what that means. In the underground markets, people are, brought, are bought and sold as chattel. Street children are rounded up and bled like lambs. I witnessed all of these things by the age of 12. She takes a deep breath and then lets it out slowly. Seeing such things, it changes you, makes you numb. But what I found when I arrived here was worse. This project, it horrifies me, Edie, and it must be stopped. Well, tell me, tell me everything you know about that, uh, about Bloodline. She shakes her head. The less that you know, the better. But both of us, for both of us, you'll just have to trust me on that. You need only know that it is evil, and that it, uh, and that is not a word that I use lightly. Well, you have to understand, Frau Muller, I can't accept the job without knowing what it entails. Of course not. Your job will be relatively simple. I want you to bring the building down. The computers, the research data, the majors and scientists that are working to bring about this abomination? I want all of them burned to ash and buried in rubble. No compromises and no exceptions. Her tone softens. I'm sure that you have unanswered questions. I'm not in the habit of dealing with shadow runners. In truth, I've spent the majority of my career living in fear of you people. But I do know that you're the only ones who can get this done. So tell me, Edie, is there anything more that you need to hear from me? Or are you ready to make a decision? Uh, well... Paul Emsel is my representative in these matters. Why couldn't you tell all of this to him? I had to meet you in person, to look into your eyes and see the man behind the name. Now that I have done so, I'm sure. You are the one that I need. Naturally, I will send my any further information about the job to Herr Amsel, provided, of course, you, that you accept. So what about any innocent people in the building? None of us are innocent, Edie. <laughs> but if you need to say, say, solve your conscience, rest assured that at, at, at the hour of your approach, the only personnel authorized to be on site will be security and senior members of the research team. And I assure you, neither are innocent in this matter. If the Bloodline project reaches completion, nobody will be safe ever again. This sounds like hyperbole, I know, but it isn't. The Bloodline project will lead to countless deaths. I'm certain enough of this to hire you, despite the fact that doing so will probably cost me my own life. I kind of want to dig into that. Why is it going to cost you your own life? Although, I mean, we can guess, but I kind of wanted to hear it from her. I'm not a demolitions expert, Frommuller. How do you expect me to level a building? You don't need to be. All that you'll need is a competent decker. The facility is powered by a number of on-site generators. There are safeguards in place to prevent them from overloading. In the event of a power spike, the system is designed to shut itself down. But I know how you can disable those safeguards. Once the generator begin or generators begin to overload, you'll have a limited time to reach a safe distance. The explosion will be... Quite catastrophic. What can you tell me about the building security? Expect it to be tight, in addition to their standard security team, as technology... Uh, as technology? That's how it's pronounced, I think. Uh, has taken out a night errant tight threat response team. Contract to protect the building. Corporate doesn't seem to mind contracting a competitor for emergency response services. I should give you some indication as to the uniqueness of this project. At any rate, I believe that I have come up with a solution to the night errant problem. I'll discuss the matter with your Herr Amsel if you decide to take the job. Okay, let's uh, talk compensation. 36,000 New Yen. As I told you, your, your Herr, Herr Amsel, that's what I have allocated for the job. That's fair. It's better than fair. I've done my work, homework. Edie? Okay, I've reached a decision. Yes, and? Um, I'll take the job. Her face visibly brightens. In that case, it's a deal. I can't tell you how relieved I am, Edie. Thank you for helping me to bring this nightmare to an end. I will iron out the de remaining details with your Herr Amsel. 
he'll want to talk this over with you anyway, I'm sure. You're a good man, Edie. You are uh, saving more lives than you know. Am I now? You know, I need to notify Emsel about your meeting with Frommuller. Yeah, I can't do anything else. Maybe Altog is going to say something about it, although I doubt it. Nope. You never know. Just might, might as well. Of course, we're not doing this mission right away. I'm really interested to see what, what, uh, what is going to happen with that mission. But it's, it's not going to be right now because, uh, well, we're out of time for the day. Also, because we are going to do the other mission, uh, before the, the this, this mission. Uh, but for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Shadowrun Dragonfall. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.